and we are live. Hello, everyone. This is part of the Dream Catchers Wealth Builder Series. Um, today, we are going to be talking about closing the wealth gap. My name is James Bryant, the president and CEO of Better You For You. And we have three distinguished panelists today that is going to talk us through their thoughts on closing the wealth gap. Uh, hey, guys, how are you guys doing? Great. Doing well. How are you doing, doing James? Well. Everybody's doing well? Yes, All right. Sir. Hey, if you are joining us for this webinar, um, you know, type into the chat box. Let us know where you're, where you're joining us from. See what kind of interaction that we can get. I'm going to have the panelists uh, do some self-introductions. And then from there, we're going to get right to the questions. And Chandra, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, well, this kind of is, uh, I'm not even sure why I'm on here, but <laughs> um, my name is Chandra. I am in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Um, I started in real estate in 2016. Uh, with some rental properties. I still haven't delved into the multifamily space. I've done some flips. Um, and outside of that, I'm just trying to find myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. Duran. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Duran Chandler. I'm also in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, proud Aggie alum. I'm a &T. Uh, I have been investing in and with my friends, including Jerome and uh, his coach mentor, James, for a while now, so, and uh, looking to build my multifamily portfolio with these gentlemen. Um, as you can see, I took the red pill if I left my shirt up there. <laughs> so I've been involved with Dream Catchers for, from the inception, uh, and I'm just here to share my thoughts on the uh, wealth gap. All right, Dr. Howard Conyers. Um, I'm, Dr. I'm Howard Conyers, as Dr. Bryant says, um, I kind of, I used to play in real estate. I kind of dabble at times. Um, I do a lot in media, food media in particular, um, engineer. And um, my next thing is getting into products and more so like products, using products as a way to actually um, lessen the, the wealth, the, get more in control of the wealth gap. So that's my background. Okay, great. And again, my name is James Bryant. Um, I do invest in real estate and I'm also the owner and CEO of Better You For You. We are a leadership training and peak performance coaching firm located here in Richmond, Virginia. And I see that we have Mr. Dream Catcher himself. Uh, Mr. Jerome Myers is here. Jerome, why don't you say a little something to the crowd, man? Man, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. So Chandra said, I don't know why I'm up here. Chandra called me last weekend and she said, Jerome, what are we going to do about closing the wealth gap? And I said, buy more apartments, of course. And she said, well, yeah, but that's complicated. What can we do on a more simple level so that more people can get engaged in the journey? And James, you and I on multiple occasions have talked about changing the face of wealth and doing some things along this path. But really haven't taken a whole lot of action outside of just living our lives. And so I just wanted to open the conversation. And so this will be a couple of things. Today's conversation, we'll post it in a few different places and we'll also turn it into a podcast for dream catchers. And I just want to capture this and you know, a lot of people may not be able to make it live. I hope that those who register do show up so that we can get some Q and A, some interaction between the folks on the panel. And my hope is that this grows into something that becomes a regular occurrence where we have the conversation and we get multiple people engaged and hopefully we can have some offshoots of this that lead to some real change and movement in the space. All right, man, thank you. So one of the things that in setting up this conversation is that different people may have different definitions of what the wealth gap is. And so I wanted to spend some time and have the panelists in their own words kind of define, how do you define the wealth gap? Uh, Chandra, we'll start with you. Um, well, when I got this question, I actually had to look it up. Um, so, I mean, my basic definition would be the definition, which is the uh, unequal distribution of assets. But on a, a different level, I think it, it comes down to um, your mentality around wealth 
and the gap. Um, for me, I don't have any limiting beliefs around money. So, uh, which is the reason why I have to even look up the definition of wealth gap, because that's never been um, anything that I've struggled with. But that's uh, my little brief explanation okay. of what I think the wealth gap is. What about you, Duran? So the wealth gap for me is, uh, like Chandra mentioned, it's the distribution of wealth. And it starts, for me, it starts at home and it starts with the education that you receive and uh, what you are trained as a young adult or a young person growing up and what money means to you and uh, your foundation in money and changing that conversation for people that look like us black and brown people that look like us, changing that conversation of what actual, uh, what money actually means to you and what you can do with uh, resources, having the amount of resources that other communities tend to have available to them, making them available to us so we can close the wealth gap. Okay, and what about you, Howard? I think like to me, wealth is, a, I kind of see it a little bit different. Like wealth is like an accumulation of assets, but it's also not just, we shouldn't always be focused on money. Money to me is a tool. And when you think about wealth, you think about like, how can you use money to actually make the two, to acquire more wealth, to accumulate more things, um, to be able to turn that dollar into cycles and, and make it increase that. And so um, you could be wealthy in a lot of different ways. And uh, Deron mentioned one that's really important to me. I think we have to be intellectually wealthy because we focus a lot on real estate, but we also sometimes overlook one of our most valuable uh, properties is intellectual property and IP, which is probably just as valuable, or even more valuable than intellectual property than uh, real estate in some cases. Okay. Oh, I, you know, I really like the different definitions, um, not even realizing that there was a wealth gap. I know for myself, I, I didn't know that there was a wealth gap because everybody that I knew, we were all poor. And we may have had more as a family than some of the other people in our neighborhood, but I wasn't thinking of, oh, I need to, you know, go do something. It, it didn't even dawn on me the, you know, being able to invest in multifamily properties and apartment complexes when I was growing up. It, it wasn't, an, it, it's not that it wasn't an option. It wasn't even a consideration, right? It didn't even enter into um, my mind. And I think that's one of the things that is really great about the current journey that we're on, particularly for me, I have two boys, they're 12 and 13, and they're getting exposure to wealth concepts at a much earlier age than I did. Um, and so I really think it's important to look at, you know, whether it's investing in real estate, your mindset, uh, looking at intellectual property, being able to expand and raise the level of awareness that people have as to what wealth is and how they can continue to build wealth for themselves. And so now that we've talked about the definition, I want you guys to spend a little bit more time kind of talking about your story. So what's your story and how are you personally closing the wealth gap? Um, and so Deron, we'll start with you for this one. So uh, I'll kind of piggyback on your, your life story there. So my introduction actually to the wealth gap was when, uh, when I was in high school and I met, I went to a high school that was based on academics. And mm -hmm. when I got to meet other students in the school and then we become friends and I went to their house, their homes, I seen that they were living different than what I was actually living. I'm, I'm, we weren't poor by no means, but we were middle class, middle class. And these, my friends that I made in high school were upper middle class. And my expectations of my life at that point before I met these people was, I'm gonna buy a house like this, I'm gonna work like this, and I'm gonna do everything that I seen that my parents did. But once I got introduced to people that were, uh, that had, had achieved a little more and had gained and earned a little more and um, had, had lived in different neighborhoods and had friends that were judges and friends of affluence, I learned that, okay, I could actually be more than what I just see around me because that's all I thought of at that time. And then I've, I've kind of been on that journey since, <laughs> since then to be more of, of what, what I saw around me. So um, 
Jerome tells the story about us doing the calculations on the steps in college. And <laughs> that's our first introduction into, into real estate. Uh, so I am the guy that lived downstairs under Jerome. Um, but um, from there, uh, I had the, we left and we went to, we went to work in corporate America. I actually am still working in corporate America. I have a pretty cool job working in the uh, Federal Reserve Bank with counterfeit money. But um, from the, uh, and I actually kept track of my money in very strategic ways. And uh, there's a podcast out there if you want to go listen to it about how my, my entire journey, I won't take off everything here. But um, in the back of my mind, on my journey from college till now, and was that thought of, I can be more, I can do more, but I have to put uh, procedures and things in place to make sure that I was earning and saving my money, being very disciplined with how I was using my money and uh, investing, which I, which I learned while I was uh, fresh out of college, like investing my money and doing more of that than my parents did so I could earn more, so I can provide more for my family and my close friends. Um, how am I personally closing the wealth gap? Uh, one thing that I didn't wanna mention that I'm personally doing is um, I have a fiduciary, I have a financial advisor that, uh, that helps me out, right? So I don't know everything about money that there is to know, but I have somebody that I trust that know that that's basically their job and that's the, basically what they're here for. It's to help me understand. So for people that don't have that, I would suggest you go out and grab yourself a fiduciary, um, somebody to help you understand your financial situation and how you could make it better and you could achieve your dreams and goals. Um, some of the other things that I did um, took advantage for people that are still working in corporate America, so this is outside of investing, take advantage of your 401k. One of the things that I really did that I didn't, I didn't recognize was I took advantage of the stock option buying that Northrop Grumman, that was my company at that time, had actually uh, had actually offered. And that's one of the reasons that I was able to gain so much money in, in the actual stock market because the stock options that your, your company will offer to you that you can purchase class A stock with them at a certain rate. That, that's one thing that led to a large sum of money that I have now that I gained over seven years from just working, money I didn't pay attention to I just made sure I bought it. And once I left, I gave it to my fiduciary. And he was like, you did a pretty good job. <laughs> like, ah, all right. Um, but so having a fiduciary, and it's a question in the chat, I'll grab it in a few. Having a fiduciary, um, paying attention for those that are still in corporate America to your 401k and your savings plans. And for those that are not in corporate America, we're looking to do extra finding ways to invest. And that's why that's where Jerome steps in where we're in James steps in where I had the interest in investing in real estate and needed people to partner with. Yeah, no, Deron, that's great. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Howard, what about you? Uh, my story, I guess I didn't say where well, I'm currently, I'm currently in new Orleans, but I'm a farm kid from South Carolina. So I, the exposure of being around people who was judges and doctors and that kind of stuff. I don't, don't really have to understand. I ain't no way engineers was really to tell you the truth, but uh, what I will say is, just being around people, it, my family wasn't, I won't say they were poor, they, was def, they were middle class, but it wasn't like high middle class. They wasn't, they wasn't the, they were probably just over middle class. Um, when when I think about it now, where I make more more than both of my parents combined, uh, that's that's not a, that's, the, that's still not a, a lot when you think about it. Um, but what I will say is my journey was, I realized to, to help close the wealth gap, you have to do it in a variety of ways. like. My father, my parents used to rent property, um, a couple of houses, and that kind of just helped supplement their, their income. But it, so I realized real estate had to be some part of the portfolio. And one of the things my parents always told me growing up on a farm is God is never making any more dirt. So if you have dirt, you have a sense of uh, uh, power. And growing up where I grew up at, farmland equated to a lot of power for black communities. And, and as I got older and I realized that has eroded, I realized that the black community has lost a lot of power because they help also is not like self-sufficient anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but then how you make money really grow is looking at real estate and looking like, like multifamily product, I mean products. We're looking at how you develop the land. The land just can't sit fallow or shallow and don't do anything. You really have to do something to it. And um, the more you could, you could make the land work for you, 
if you really put down the right infrastructure. And so I think that's really important. And that's the reason like, yeah, multifamily people, all, three things I think people always was needing in life, regardless of all the technology that Ron, that Ron developed or James Bryant developed or Howard Kynes developed is food, water and shelter. And sometimes it doesn't look as sexy, but we need those bis basic things and all that ties to a certain economy. And that economy will forever be available. And so we need to play in multiple sectors. And I think like those are some two other sectors I'm particularly interested in playing in is food and shelter. Okay. Thanks a lot, Howard. Chandra, what about you? Um, so for me, uh, my story, um, I've always known the value of a dollar. I remember, um, you know, my grandmother would give me, yeah, I don't know, a dollar, maybe 50 cents. And she would always say, make sure you save, you know, save half of it, save some of it. And then, of course, the little sayings, don't spend it all in one place. And I remember uh, my mother didn't um, abide by the be, what is it, be seen and not heard. Um, if I asked a question or if, if I wasn't understanding something, she already always explained it. So I remember there was something that I wanted her to get in the grocery store and she explained, well, I could buy you this one thing and you could eat it once and it costs this much, or I could go buy, you know, a whole box and it would feed us, both of us for a week for this much. So those little things, um, kind of created my mentality around money. Also, um, I also came from a middle-class family who came from a poor family <laughs> to a certain extent, or at least uh, I think my mother thought they were poor, but it was just the way that my grandparents ran their household. My dad, on the other hand, he, he did come from a poor family. So um, they kind of combined both of their upbringings from, you know, how they grew up into, um, you know, their current state of, of income. Um, and I think that has taken me a long way. Even my grandparents, you know, my grandmother was the type that, so my grandfather ran the business outside of the house. Um, and my grandmother was the one who stayed home, but she took care of the books and things. Um, and their business was, my grandfather had a drywall business and he, they had um, property, they had rental properties. However, uh, they didn't teach the, the, you know, their kids and grandkids about entrepreneurship um, or anything about real estate. So, you know, as far as, you know, how I'm personally closing that gap now is, you know, I am taking, going back to entrepreneurship and real estate and um, doing it the more modern way um, and making sure that every move that I make, uh, anyone who wants to know about it, that I explain it and explain how, how simple, you know, it could be. Okay, great. I, I know for myself, um, you know, my, my mother finished high school. She was a pastor in a small uh, storefront church in Philadelphia where I grew up. And my father never finished high school and he was an auto body worker. So he worked and he welded panels on the sides of 18 wheeler trucks, but he also owned an auto body shop. And, you know, we all as kids went to go work at the auto body shop, but we didn't look at it in terms of a wealth building structure or anything else. It was just what he had to do to survive, what we had to do to cobble the funds to make a living. And I really didn't think of my father as an entrepreneur until I got much older. Until I'm older, I had kids and I'm doing other things. I'm starting businesses and I'm working and I'm like, oh, my dad was an entrepreneur, even though he had his job. But the level of awareness and consciousness of what he was doing wasn't there. So I suspect, Chandra, even with your grandparents, they weren't necessarily even thinking about building wealth. They were thinking, this is what we have to do to survive, period. Um, and I think part of what is really enlightening for me, I mentioned my kids, is being able to raise their level of awareness to what the possibilities are now, early on in life, so that as they get older, 
they will be more aware of what the choices are that they have to be able to build wealth, to be able, I mean, because, you know, Jerome and I talk all the time is that our ceiling is going to be their floor, you know, so they're going to start at a certain level way above where we had the ability to start in terms of knowledge and in terms of people being able to mentor and help them be able to move forward. So, Deryan, could you touch on just a little bit, were there some particular barriers in particular that you had to overcome as, as you have been making your way through closing this personal wealth gap or making your way through your journey? Uh, limiting beliefs um, that I placed on myself is probably the number one thing that I had to overcome. Um, letting myself that I, I am capable and I am deserving of actually um, closing this wealth gap uh, or, or being a provider uh, and learning about wealth and being able to uh, give that information to other people in a manner that in which they could receive it. Um, education is probably one of the biggest things I probably had to overcome just to educate myself on what, what it what it meant to uh, earn money, what it meant to have life insurance policies, what it meant to invest in real estate, what it meant to have a 401k, um, what, it, what, what it does it mean to have a trust, a living trust, a will, th things of that nature to protect your wealth and, and keep your wealth going to actually close the wealth gap from when you're gone, when you're beyond beyond life here on earth. So um, education is probably one of the biggest things, sitting down, reading, listening, learning from others. It's probably one of the biggest hurdles that I had to overcome and uh, get, getting disciplined with my money, becoming, uh, becoming very intimate with my own finances is probably probably something that everybody has to overcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's true. And being able to equip yourself with the tools to protect and preserve your wealth um, is right. something that we all need to consider as we are in the wealth building business, as we build our businesses, as we invest in real estate, those other structures, we need to become more aware and educated about so that we can protect the wealth that we're building, right. you know, protect it for ourselves and protect it for our families and future generations. Uh, Howard, were there any particular barriers or things that you felt you had to overcome as, as you have been making your journey? Um, what I would say is like thinking about like our re resourcefulness as a people and kind of rechanneling that. Um, not always think about the lack of scarce, the scarcity principle. We have a lot of scarcity thoughts in our community. And so kind of deprogramming that out of my mindset. Um, but I think I want to say something about what Chandra and James said earlier. Like, um, and I talked to my parents about this a lot. They was entrepreneurs in every sense of the word, but they was entrepreneurs for sheer survival. Like, yep. um, it wasn't like entrepreneurship to thrive. It was just what they needed to make it to where we are today. It's it's on us to take that entrepreneurship spirit, and they, could they never call it re re entrepreneurship? Because I think about my grandfather who sold hams and stuff like that, or. My mom used to take eggs to the school teachers and be selling eggs to the school teachers. That was entrepreneurship, but it was it was called a survival um, and staying yeah. within the community. So we have to kind of realize they may not call what they were doing entrepreneurship, but uh, we have to take what they did in entrepreneurship and, and make sure we educate our future generations about what what they did. And we taking it we taking the education that we have been afforded to take it to the next level. And um I think the biggest thing for me is just kind of changing your mindset of like what you think and what you, what we always think about if I shoulda, coulda, and we, we're afraid to start small. And uh, I think that's a really big thing in our community. We always think we got to have the biggest grandiose idea to get started. And sometimes we just need to start small and what is a thousand square foot house and work our way up. There's nothing wrong with starting small. That's true. Thanks. Uh, Chandra, what about yourself? And the, the question was, oh, what barriers any barriers? <laughs> no, no, you're good. It's any barriers that you have had to overcome, you know, the barriers that you had to overcome and how did you overcome them? Uh, anything in particular kind of pops out of, as, as you have been making your journey. I think my barrier has been uh, uh, having an abundance mindset around money, because again, I come from 
uh, situation where from from my upbringing to me personally, where I've never had to go without something. I've always had the essentials, and I've had all. I've always had a little bit more than what I need, enough for you know an emergency. So, I've I've struggled with the well. Why do I need so much? <laughs> what am I going to do with all the extra? And at this point, um, you know, it's what's I haven't necessarily overcome it yet. Um, and the reason is because, you know, I don't have my own growing family yet and nor, nor am I sure that I will. So my why isn't necessarily based around my family and I'm an only child. So it's not like I have nieces and nephews or anything to, uh, you know, pass this wealth down to. But um, one of the things that's starting to develop is um, really wanting to give back. And especially in the climate that we're in, if I don't have, you know, family or, you know, um, children of my own to pass knowledge or wealth down to, um, I think that at some point in the future, uh, my abundance mindset will come from seeing how I'm able to help other people who maybe didn't have, you know, an upbringing like mine and who still can't see past where they are or where they've been. So that, that would be probably my biggest uh, struggle and I'm still kind of struggling with it. No, no, I, I, I get it. Um, you know, I understand is, you know, when you're, when you have, when you're living a blessed life, a lot of times, you know, people will say, well, you don't need that much. Well, you know, there are different things that you can invest in, different things that you can give to, you know, give towards and contribute towards and all of those things require resources, right? Um, and then it's the whole thing of, yeah, am I building wealth for my family? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a reality. I have two boys, you know, a wife, and I have nieces and nephews. But when I strip all of that down, the things that I'm building, I'm building for me. Not for me in a selfish way, but so that I can put myself in a position to be able to give out to others. You know, so when I talk about, and even when I formed a company, Better You For You, at some point, you have to want to do things for yourself, not from a selfish perspective, but to be able to build your resources up so that you can continue to be a blessing to other people. And, you know, I think, Chandra, what you said is absolutely right. You know, sometimes you're like, I don't need this much. But if I would have had, if I would have kept that mentality, I would have never had money set aside to be able to invest in multifamily properties. I, I would have had money in my 401k, money in an IRA, money invested in different things, but I wouldn't have had the resources when the opportunity came, I was prepared. And it took a long time to prepare. So Deron, I, I'm, I'm with you with getting intimate with your bills and your money and being able to set a budget and strictly, you know, set, you know, stick to it and being able to say, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, not because the money isn't available, but the money's allocated towards something else. And, and being able to be accountable to yourself and say, this is how I'm going to spend my money. This is how I'm going to budget. This is what I'm going to do. And being able to take those small, consistent steps, like you said, Howard, those small steps make a difference. If small, consistent steps can build you an empire, but you'll never have an empire. You'll never build wealth. You'll never close the gap if you never take the step, you've got to take the step. So, you know, one of the, I think one of the last questions, second to last question I wanted to get into, and I think Chandra, you already started hitting on this a little bit. And, you know, when we talk about closing the wealth gap in a broader sense, you know, does it matter to you? And I think Howard, you've talked about it as well. I think Deron, you've talked about it as well, just saying in terms of being able to give back to your community. I know Jerome and I have talked on numerous occasions and he mentioned it earlier as we opened up the webinar, we've talked about changing the face of wealth, right? We've talked about changing what wealth looks like. This is what wealth looks like. What, what you see on the screen as you're looking at this webinar, this is the picture of wealth. Um, whether you're talking about wealth in our minds, wealth in our resources, this is wealth. So I'm going to stop getting, I'm going to get off my soapbox <clears throat> and have you all spend some time just talking about, does it matter to you? And if so, 
you know, uh, why is it important to you? I mean, to be honest with you, we, you have to have resources. Unfortunately, in the world we live in, you can't, as much as I want to give to other things or pour into other people, it takes resources and to better see the visions of helping other people. If you have the resources, it could happen a lot faster than you waiting on, I say, the government or any other charities. Um, you could really pour into your communities and uh, just having those resources. I think like uh, one of the saddest things I think, and we always think about, we don't have resources. And But when I look at like Sunday morning, I see resources come out of our community and poured out quickly. I mean, I, no offense, James, being the <laughs> being a son of a preacher, but the church plate has a lot of resources, but uh, we got to have the resources. I believe it's fundamental to change our community. It's fundamental to build our community. Um, and without it, you can't do it. No offense taken. <laughs> Chandra? Um, I, it, it is definitely uh, important to me that we um, close the wealth gap. And I say that because, um, you know, green has no color really, you know, if you think about it. So the more, I'm trying to think, I like to use scenarios, but I'll just say this, the more money that we have as a community, the more we're able to control our own destiny. It's like this, this, um, this picture that I saw of, of two, two lions, one was caged, one was free. And the caption said something like, you know, one of these lions uh, gets free healthcare, free food, um, et cetera. And the other one has to fend for themselves. Well, fending for yourself is much more, it's, it's much less of uh, someone giving you something. You having to choose between what is given to you um, by bridging this wealth gap. I mean, we can, we can make new choices. We can create new choices more than just one and two. There's so many options outside of that. Um, so, I mean, in a general sense, that's the main reason I think it's important, especially for our community um, to bridge this wealth gap. So we have more choices and that definitely, uh, um, are catered to what we need. And see, I bridge what Howard is saying and what you've just said, Chandra. And I think of having the resources and the ability to create future entrepreneurs, right? If they have dreams, whether it's apartment investing, whether it's building products, as we've talked about, Howard, being able to have the resources to invest in the community so that they can go out and fend for themselves so that they do have access to capital, um, capital coming from their community that's not only interested in the performance of the company, but that's interested in their development as well. Duran? So closing the, the wealth gap definitely matters to me. And I'm and like you, I'm kind of a bridge in between what Chandra and Howard talked about. And I'll go back to when I mentioned the friends that I made in high school and I would go out to their homes and see that they were living a different lifestyle than I was used to. So that that right there is us. We are the group of people that somebody's gonna to come to our house, uncle, brother, friend, mother, father, somebody that we can influence to show them that there is a different way of living life. There's a different way of, of utilizing your money. And so they, they had the nice house, but they also had the resources, right? So they, they, they had the resources as well because of them, their parents then closing the wealth gap. And now that we're older and we're creating the wealth, we are those people. And this is why it's highly important to me because I need to be that person that I have a daughter that one of her friends comes to the house and they can say, oh, I don't have to live like that. I can do more. I can be more. I can, I can obtain the resources out there. I don't have to be what they're projecting to me on TV or what my, what my friends at, that's close to my house are living. That socioeconomic situation doesn't have to be me in the future. So that's why it's, it's important to me because we are it. We, we, are, we, are the, we are the face of the people that changed my life. So I want to I want to give that back out to the world. No, no, that's awesome, man. And I, I do have this one last question. 
And it's, it's, you could give one piece of advice, just one that you have to give to somebody that's looking to close the wealth gap, particularly their personal situation. So they're trying to improve their personal situation. What would that piece of advice be and why? And Deron, we'll start with you uh, on this one. Uh, I will I will say, and I said it before, get very, and I use the word intimate on purpose, get very, very intimate with your personal finances. Get in there and waddle around in them and figure them out, figure out what makes you happy, figure out what doesn't make you happy, and figure out what you want to be and what you want to grow in the future. That will help direct your decisions, if you're serious about it. That will help direct your decisions going forward and help you actually close the wealth gap. So yes, learn your finances front, backwards, inside, and out. Okay. Chandra, we'll go with you second on this one. Um, I would say in, in the current world that we're in right now, you know, we're going towards the Jetsons type of lifestyle. So um, I would say learn a skill. Definitely learn some type of skill that's not, you know, customer service based or something that a computer or a robot or, you know, some type of technology can take over. Um, learn how to operate the bots <laughs> or something, you know, as long as it works with your own um, personal beliefs regarding technology and things like that, but learn a skill. Okay. And Howard, what about, what would be your one piece of advice, my friend? Consistency. Whatever path you go down, you got to be consistent <laughs> and you have to make that, every, that consistent step every day. You can't waver on it. You just have to go with it. Okay. And let the universe conspire. And if I was giving one piece of advice to an individual that wanted to close that personal wealth gap, and to each of you that is that's listening to this live, and for those of you that will be listening to the recording or even the podcast, it is believe that you can. Absolutely believe that you can. Because if you believe that you can, then you are going to take the steps required to make it happen. You're gonna be consistent in what you do and applying what you learn, whether it's acquiring a skill, whether it's continuing to be diligent, you will do that. But for me, it all starts with belief. It all starts with belief. Hey, I want to thank you guys for joining us for this Dreamcatchers Wealth Builder series. Uh, this is the first one that we've done on closing the wealth gap. Uh, thank you so much for extending your time to be a part of this panel. And uh, myself and on behalf of Jerome, I know we appreciate your time and all of the insight that you've provided to our listeners. Uh, everybody listening, be on the lookout for more information about the next uh, Wealth Builder series. And I uh, thank you and appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, any other things that you want to do, you can put it in the Q&A now. We'll hold the panelists here to see if there's anything else that they uh, want to say. Any, any closing words from anyone? I did have one thing I wanted to say. Um, yeah, I was just getting ready to, <laughs> to talk about the conversation I had with Jerome. Um, so it is uh, the conversation that I had with him. I, you know, with everything that's going on right now, I'm always racking my brain like, you know, we can't do the same thing over and over again and think that we're going to get a different result. And then I think, well, what can I do? You know, I, I'm, I'm no one, but I am someone. So what can I do? And I was just thinking, you know, there's a lot. Information is free. And it's kind of a each one teach one um, type of scenario, but it's more of a, the contract that I have with, with you or the person that is, is asking me for something. So, you know, I'm well-versed in different areas of real estate. So if someone comes and asks me, you know, teach me this, or, you know, tell me a little bit more about this, then my one requirement of them would be either to the next time someone asked, um, you know, about, something similar uh, that they want to learn, um, you know, I require them to do the same thing. Okay. So don't just keep the information to yourself. Also, it could be unrelated to real estate. If someone comes to you, everyone has a thing that people come to them for. So when the next time someone comes to you for that thing, you know, when you answer their question, you just say, you know, I just kind of ask that you 
do the same to the next person that, um, you know, that asks you how to do whatever it is. And I think that this is, um, this is something that has no face, <laughs> you know, there's no leader, there's no for or against this. You just, you do it or you don't. Yeah. It's not red or black or blue. <laughs> it's okay. just something that, that can be done to, um, you know, spread knowledge and then, and it's done in a way that's not, um, there's no pressure. You know, you have no pressure to go out. It's not like a MLM or anything where you got to go call all your friends and family. And, you know, it's just whenever someone approaches you <laughs> on, you know, for knowledge, share the knowledge, but ask them to do the same thing. No, I think that is a, a great uh, lesson. And in fact, I, I would challenge anyone who's listening to this or watching this to find one person that you think this conversation will be a blessing to one person that you think can learn from this conversation, not 20 people, not everybody on the Facebook posts, but one person and send that to them. If you think that this will be useful to them, we had a, a few other requests come through the chat. One was Howard. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how you were digging into or how you are digging into the media and what your thoughts are uh, on that or what your, what your activity is in that area? So media is something I kind of got, I fell into by accident and I, I didn't know what it was, um, but I wasn't afraid to go and try something new that was very unfamiliar territory. But once I got in it, I realized the, the power of media and the perceptions of people and the access to better expose people who look like me or you um, through my words, uh, because they just don't get the opportunity to see individuals. There's a lot of spotlight in media from our rappers and entertainers, there's nothing wrong with that, or our athletes, but they need to see there's people like Deron, or there's people like Chandra, there's people like James. And so if they could see someone that looked like me who went through, um, I guess, a not a traditional route, I mean, I guess it is more a, a route that's, I guess you could say is attainable because it's based on statistics, it's not really attainable for everybody to go to the NFL or to the NBA, but you have more of a chance to go down a different path. And so that's what drives me about media, I know I talk a lot about food and culture because food and culture helps us understand who we are as a people, but it also helps people understand who we, we are, but also it helps um, us learn about other people. And um, one of the things I really love about the food and culture work, I primarily focus on African-Americans in the South. And the reason I do that because it helps me to understand our greatness. And when you understand American history, the US history and what African-Americans contribute to build in this country, then you understand that you can do anything you want to, but we, the opportunities that they, the people before us didn't have, we have those opportunities and we got to take advantage of those opportunities and use them to the best of our abilities. It's going to be hard, but we got a lot more tools in our tool bag to excel. And so that's the reason I'm motivated into working media. I'm working on trying to get, well, I'm doing something where I'm becoming a national brand spokesperson for a project soon. And then, um, in honor African Americans in barbecue, and then I'm looking at getting back into like media in the digital world again. So I mean, I have I'm working with a production company, and we'll see how that goes. I, but I want to be an executive producer the next time I goes into I go into it being a host of a show. And oh, I thought Deron was talking about some kind of money or something like that. It's not about the money. It's about the exposure, reach, and access to better change the world through media. So. Uh, we, I'm excited about the future. And then hopefully with the real estate thing, I better park some of the money right there to help uh, make it easier for me to pursue those type activities. Okay, great. Uh, Deron, there was another question or comment to talk about health and nutrition and how that, you know, has, how that has helped you on your path to building wealth. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, my story goes hand in hand of me getting out of debt and me losing 50 pounds. Um, they, they, they run parallel to each other, run side by side. So I, when I got out of debt, I actually started shedding weight as well. Um, just getting healthier, eating, eating the proper foods, uh, exercising on a daily basis. Um, it, it's an old statement that everybody says health is wealth. And, and it is. If you're not healthy, it's hard to do anything. If you're not filling up to it, it's hard to do things. So uh, 
eat, eating the proper foods have a, a very tremendous impact on your uh, actual mood and how you feel during the day. So eating your vegetables, your lean proteins, the correct carbohydrates for you, it's not, not the same for everybody. The, the, eating the correct carbohydrates that make you feel better. Um, things of that nature helps your, helps your body function in a manner where your thought process is a lot clearer and how you move throughout your day is, uh, is awesome. So uh, like I said, they, they run parallel in my life. Like they, they happen pretty much at the same time. And uh, I had a, had a concentration on learning about myself. So I learned about the health and my health and what, what I needed to do going forward and then learn about actually uh, getting out of debt at that time frame. It's the very first dream the very first Dreamcatchers podcast. You can go back and listen to that. that you'll hear how the stories kind of intertwine together. But it's very important that you guys uh, take care of your health because if you're not healthy, then this entire conversation on wealth doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. Uh, so if there is, uh, if someone wanted to get in contact with each of you, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you to learn more about what you're doing or just to make a, connection uh with you Duran. uh insight into my life on instagram is uh sweatshop d just spelled just like that one word um i think i'm the only no i can't be but uh Duran chandler on facebook uh Duran chandler on linkedin and uh if you needed to email me wanted to ask me questions it's Duran dot chandler the number one at gmail.com I'm okay. happy to answer your questions, talk to you about anything you wanted to talk about. That's great. Chandra? Um, before I give my information, <laughs> there was one thing, one other thing I wanted to say. Okay. Um, a lot of times we take no as like the final answer on things. And I just want to make sure that people know there's always someone else that will say yes because they have the resources to be able to say yes. So don't take no uh, as the final option. And the other thing that I wanted to say is health is also, it's a reason that I quit my job. Um, I, it just, you know, the way that the whole 40 hours a week um, structure worked, it just, you know, I didn't see it health being healthy for my mental, physical, or spiritual uh, well-being. But um, in order to reach me, um, you can just reach me on Facebook. And it's the way my name is spelled here, Chandra Mentor. Okay, thank you. Dr. Conyers. Um, the best way to reach me is probably um, email info at howardconyers.com and then on IG, Carolina Q Nola underscore PhD. Um, but probably the email is best, which, uh, or you can go, go to the website and there's a submit something, a questionnaire, and I generally respond. Okay. Thank you. And if anybody wants to get in contact with me, you can reach me at uh, at better you for you on Instagram. And that's B E T T E R. Then the word you, um, Y O U, the number four, then the letter U. Um, both on Instagram and Facebook, as well as you can reach me at James at better you for you dot com. Um, again, thank you guys for your time. Uh, I appreciate it. We have some interesting topics to possibly discuss uh, in future uh, wealth building series. And so we look forward to kind of digging in to see what are some things that we can offer. But uh, you guys have a great day and thank you all for joining us. Bye everyone. See y'all later.